Assalamu alaikum. Today, we're going to be talking about alcohols, phenols, styles, and ethers. Are you ready to get started? I know I am. Yeah. All right. First of all, we're going to be talking about alcohols. What are alcohols? Alcohols are one of the, fun are one of the organic uh, compounds that incorporate oxygen in its functional group. We studied alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic compounds. None of them had oxygen in them. They were all hydrocarbons, only carbons and hydrogens. And right now, we're gonna be talking about organic molecules that have other elements in them, such as oxygen, and nitrogen, and so on. So for alcohols, the functional group is a hydroxyl group. It's an OH. That's the functional group of alcohols. So if you see an organic molecule with an OH, you can automatically tell that this is an, this is an alcohol. Well, not always. There are some exceptions because some other organic molecules also have OH. But if you see an OH just by itself, you automatically know this is an alcohol. So let's get on to naming. Because naming is the most fun part ever. I've drawn up three structural formulas with OHs involved. So the OH is over here, OH is over here, and OH is over here. We'll go through, we'll go through each one of them. The first one only has one carbon. And if you have one carbon, the, and the, the prefix has to be meth. So it's, and then for alcohol, they all end with all. So we have to make our alcohols end with all. So this is methanol. What about this? This is one, two, three, four carbons in a circle, in a cycle. So this has to be a cyclo compound. And this is since it's four, four is bute. So, and alcohol is all, so this is butanol. But it's a cycle, so it's cyclobutanol. Cyclobutanol, okay. What about this one? This one is also one, two, three, four carbons, but in a straight chain, so it's butanol. It's not cyclic, it's in a straight chain. However, as many of you have already told, the, uh, the OH is not at the first position. In this case, the OH is at a different position. And we have to specifically say which position, which carbon position the OH is at. In this case, it's at carbon number two. Well, because if you start on this side, one, two, three, four. Two is the lower number. If I start from this side, one, two, three, four, in this case, it becomes three, which is not what we want. We want to try and get the least number possible. So this becomes two butanol. That, that's all there is to naming. It's pretty easy. All right, on to the properties. Alcohols can accept hydrogen bonds and they can form hydrogen bonds. Why? Because they have a hydrogen attached to an oxygen. And since oxygen and nitrogen are the ones that allow hydrogen bonding to occur, uh, alcohols can hydrogen bond. They're small molecules, specifically methanol and ethanol, the one carbon and two carbon molecules, are soluble in water. After that, they're insoluble in water, even though they have an OH. Their OH helps them dissolve in water. However, because as you increase the length of the chain, you get more and more hydrophobic parts. The carbon part is hydrophobic. It does not like water. It is non-polar. So, as you start to increase the chain, it becomes more alkane-like rather than alcohol-like. So, only the small molecules are, sol are soluble. And the most important point is that they are neutral. They are neither acidic nor basic. They, they have almost the same neutral, they almost have the same pH as water. And if you consider water as being completely neutral, then alcohols are also completely neutral. And for the reactions, they undergo one main reaction called dehydration. Dehydration means the removal of water from the molecule. Now, dehydration, since OH is one of the substitutes of water, they will react with it, they will accept another H, another proton from somewhere else, releasing water and giving a product. However, it's... And the result of dehydration is an alkene. We studied alkenes already. If you haven't watched our video yet on alkenes, make sure you check that out. So dehydration results in alkenes. Now what are alkenes? Alkenes are the hydrocarbons that have the functional group of a double bond. 
that was their functional group. It had a double one. So let's let's give this a shot. Let's let's try and make an alkene. So over, let me draw ethanol. So ethanol is two carbons and and with an OH group. If I take ethanol and I take and the OH from here along with a hydrogen from here and I take these two and release these to form water what happens is this bond becomes free and this bond becomes free allowing them to connect each other to make a double bond so what happens is you end up getting an alkene like that and that is ethene which we did in our video last time. However, there's one more reaction that alcohols undergo, and that is oxidation. Oxidation. Now, oxidation has many meanings. It can either mean adding oxygen, making more bonds to oxygen, removing hydrogen, the loss of electrons. There's, there's a lot of uh, definitions for it. But in this case, the definition here means making more bonds to oxygen. However, oxidation produces two different uh, products depending on what the alcohol is. If the alcohol is a primary alcohol, you end up getting an aldehyde. But if the, if the alcohol was a secondary alcohol, you will get a ketone. And here's why. If you don't know what aldehydes and ketones are, make sure you check out our video on that as well. Now, if I take methanol, which is a primary alcohol, and if I uh, remove two hydrogens, if I take this hydrogen, let me use a different color, if I take this hydrogen beside the OH, and I take another hydrogen, and I remove these to, to release a molecule of H2, what happens is this bond becomes free, and this bond becomes free allowing them to come together to make a C double bond O. So the end result will be C double bond O and then two H's. This is an aldehyde. This is actually the simplest aldehyde. If I take a secondary alcohol, such as 2-butanol over here, and if I remove this H with the O, and I remove this H, on that same carbon, allowing this bond to become free and allowing this bond to become free, making them join together to be able to form a double bond with the oxygen, I will end up getting... So, I've already gone out and you can see that the carbonyl group is in between two carbons, making it a ketone. So primary or secondary alcohols when you undergo oxidation, they will give you different results. Primary will give you an aldehyde, a secondary will give you a ketone. That's all there is to alcohols. Now let's move on to phenols. Now let's start with phenols. Phenols, yeah. I love phenols because phenols are really easy. Imagine if you took an aromatic compound and you took an alcohol and you made them have a baby, you'd get a phenol. Because the functional group of a phenol is aromatic, it's a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group. So the simplest phenol will be would be this, which is actually called phenol, surprisingly. Now, of course, I can add some groups such as a methyl group, so this would be uh, a 2-methyl uh, phenol, this would be 2-3-dimethyl phenol, you know, if I, so if I drew in the methyl groups. So the naming isn't that hard, because the name ends with phenol, and as long as you keep the OH carbon number one, and you make sure everything else is the lowest number. So I'm not going to bother you with doing those things, you can patch those things on your own time. What I do want to talk to you about is its properties. It can undergo hydrogen bonding because it has an OH group, therefore it can 
accept hydrogen bonds and it can give hydrogen bonds. But the more interesting part is, is that it's acidic. This is what makes it different from an alcohol. Alcohols are not acidic, but a phenol is acidic. Therefore, it will react with the base, giving you products. That's it for phenols. Now we're going to talk about thiols. Now thiols are very interesting because they're actually quite similar to alcohols in structure, but very different in their reactions. Now, what am I saying? You'll find out. Alcohols have an OH as their functional group. Thiols have an SH as their functional group. Sulfur is in the same periodic group as um, as the oxygen, it's in group 6, therefore it has the same number of valence electrons allowing it to have the same number of bonds and therefore roughly the same chemical properties. However, it is less electronegative than oxygen, so it cannot form any uh, hydrogen bonds and the bond is less polar than it is for an OH. But the, it's very important to study thiols because we have a thiol group in a very important amino acid called cysteine. Now cysteine is an amino acid, it helps make this protein, it's, it's important for, for life. And that's because it's the only amino acid that has a cysteine group, allowing it to form disulfide bridges. What are disulfide bridges? I'll show you in a bit. Disulfide bridges are formed because of redox reactions. And as many of you already know, the reed means reduction and the ox means oxidation. So let's first look at oxidation. Let me take the simplest thiol, for example, if the simplest thiol would be uh, just a methyl group attached to a thiol, so CH3SH, and I took another thiol group, so I have a thiol group here and a thiol group here, and if these underwent oxidation, what would happen is this hydrogen and this hydrogen would leave making a free bond here and a free bond here. And these bonds would join, causing you to get a disulfide bridge, which looks something like this. So the two sulfurs are joined together. You won't find this happening with oxygen, although it's in the same periodic table, in the periodic group. And, uh, However, this reaction is reversible. This is called the disulfide bridge. Let me actually write that down. And this is reversible. I can go back to my normal thiol by reduction. So if I take this and I add hydrogen to it, what would happen is this bond would break, making one bond free here, making one bond free here, and allowing me to add my hydrogens so what would happen is, I would return to having my two thiols. Of course, this is a very simple structure. You know, this is methyl thiol. It's only one carbon. This, the amino acid cysteine actually has many more carbons and it's a more complicated structure. You can find the structure online if you search for it. But that's all there is to thiols. And now, on to ethers. Now, ethers. So, ethers are one of my favorite things because their functional group looks like that. It looks like someone's doing like this. You know, it's an oxygen with two bonds sticking out. I've drawn two molecules here. We're going to try and name them, and then we're going to move on to the properties. So naming ethers is actually really simple. All you have to do is imagine them as, there's two ways to name them. You can either name them as two separate alkyl groups. So we take the two alkyl groups, this is an ethyl because it's one, two carbons. So let me write ethyl. And this is a methyl, it's only one carbon. So this is methyl. So we have ethyl, methyl, ether. That's one way of naming it. The other way of naming it is when it gets a little bit more complicated. When you end up having something like this, when the chains get a little bit bigger, instead of using very big alkyl group names, for example, this would be isobutanyl. That's too complicated, too weird. I don't want to use that. Instead, what we can do is take the smaller group with the oxygen attached. That group is called an alkoxy group. 
an alkoxy group. So this is ethoxy. So I have ethoxy. That's my one of my prefixes. I have one, two, three, four. I have four carbons, so that's butan, butanal, uh, butane. Sorry, because it's in, it's saturated. So I have butane. And the alkoxy group is attached to carbon number two if I start from this side, which gives me the lowest number. So it's going to be 2-ethoxy-butane. That's another way of naming it. And generally, we like to use this one more because we tend to deal with bigger molecules. But if you have small molecules, we can use two separate alkyl groups. Now, the properties of ethers. Ethers cannot do hydrogen bonding because they don't have a hydrogen with the oxygen. I don't care how much you look for it, you cannot find that hydrogen attached to the oxygen. However, they can accept hydrogen bonds because they do have an electronegative O, which has two free pair of electrons that can accept hydrogen bonds, but they cannot give, they cannot form any hydrogen bonds. I guarantee you, no matter how hard you look, you will not find any hydrogen bonds being formed over there. And that's it for ethers. Thank you for watching. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Meditorial, for more future videos.